Hello and welcome back. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look around the greenhouse and seeing what sort of progress we have in here. I have a lot of plants with ripe peppers on them, which you'd think I'd be excited about, but I'm really not. And I'll explain why a little bit later in this video. We'll also have a bit of an update on my chili cross, my peri peri cross with lemon drop. And we'll check out the poblano, the one that I'm comparing the indoor versus outdoor growth, and we'll see how they're getting on. Lastly, we'll take a look out in the vegetable patch, which is where the outdoor poblano is, and we'll show you the progress out there too. But first, let's get started in here inside the greenhouse and see how my potted up plants are doing. And then we'll take a look over there at the rest of them. We can see that I potted up quite a few plants. I did this the other day. I just wanted to make sure that I had some plants in their final pots because unfortunately when they are stuck inside their one liter pots like these are for too long, they get a bit root bound and unfortunately will reduce the amount of growth that I'll have a little bit later when I do actually get to pot these up. You can see I have the vast majority of my plants still in their one liter pots. But if we have a look over here, we can see obviously a lot of growth. These weren't potted up recently. These ones were potted up probably about two months ago. These ones are more recent, but you can already see a lot of new growth. This plant, for example, was about there. And uh, we can see now there's a lot of new growth coming out the top and around the sides as well. It's quite an interesting one, this. Uh, we can see that it's trying to grow in a bit of a column and uh, we'll see how that progresses through the season, but I'm liking the look of it so far. We have still a little bit of the effect of aphid damage. Uh, the leaves are a little sticky, which is what you'll get after aphids have done their business. We can see that some of my plants are still quite inundated with these guys. And uh, it really is a pain in the backside. Thankfully, I do have a lot of hoverflies inside the greenhouse now, as well as our friend, the ladybug. And actually I've had a load of ladybugs hatching or converting into ladybugs from the larva stage. We can see the remnants of that on leaves like this. Um, that's just a ladybug that has turned into a ladybug. That's the, the skin of the larva. So these plants are a bit more mature. These were potted up about two months ago compared to the ones that are potted up just the other week. You see these are far smaller, but yeah, that's looking lovely. That's how all my plants should be looking at this stage, if not a little bit bigger. We can see this one, for example, is lovely, beautiful size, and exactly how I want my plants to look. That's about uh, two and a half, three feet high, and it's just looking so healthy. Let's have a look at my chili cross. This here is the chili cross and uh, it's growing some weeds. Let's get rid of the weeds. Get rid of that a bit later. But we can see loads of flowers coming through. It's looking healthy. Remember this was quite badly infected with aphids, but can't actually see any on here right now, which is fantastic. We see loads of flowers and again, we're having a lot of different types of flowers. So there, that's four petals on this plant. We have some five petal flowers. So it's still doing its thing of being weird. Uh, what you will notice is we have a couple here that have successfully pollinated and that will turn into some chilies. It'll be interesting to see what they finally turn into. It's been a long, hard slog to get to the stage but I'm sure it will be worth it. I hope it will be worth it. So we've got quite a few that have successfully pollinated and that one has just fallen off. So that one has not successfully pollinated, but these two are okay. So that's all right. And I'll keep updated on the next video. Hopefully we're going to have some actual peppers to show you because those look like they've taken quite nicely. There's quite a few here. You can see that one as well has successfully pollinated. Yeah, I'm definitely excited to see what this turns into after all the work that I've put into it. And uh, I will show you the progress as we go along. We can see we have probably about 120 plants that still need to be potted up. And like I mentioned in the beginning of the video, we have quite a few that are coming ripe. Uh, a lot of mature chilies. This isn't ripened up yet. And uh, yeah, we have loads of these chilies coming through on a lot of these plants. 
The reason this happens is because they're in a smaller pot. So if you do want to force a few small chilies to come ripe very early on in the season, then I would hold back on potting up your plants. But you're going to end up with smaller plants and fewer peppers. And that's not exactly ideal, depending on what you want, of course. But we can see here, I've got quite a large pepper on these plants. And yeah, this is still just a one liter pot, but the size of that pepper and it's ripe. Yeah, it's, it's not what I want to see because I want these peppers to be growing as big as those ones that are in the pots, the large final pot size. And of course these ones here, when they're this small and they're putting out peppers, they aren't going to grow much bigger. Well, they will, but when I pot them up, it's going to take a little while to adjust to start growing again. And that's what you really want to avoid. Let's take a look at a couple of my plants that were a little interesting to me. And we'll start off with the Thunder Mountain Longhorn. This thing is very interesting to me. I haven't seen a plant do this before. And if we have a look there, the pedicels, so this part here just below where the flower is, or above in this case, is extremely long. Typically, if you have a look, you'll see the pedicels are not very long at all. But these here, they're hanging low. Uh, we have some aphids on here, which I need to get rid of. But some lovely flowers, big, many petaled flowers, or at least that one is. And you've got these peppers that are growing, hanging very low off these pedicels. So yeah, it looks very interesting. I'd like to see it when it's a lot larger. I think it'll look quite fascinating, like teardrops kind of thing. But I thought this was quite an interesting plant and I think one I might grow again next year depending on how these taste, how well it produces. And uh, yeah, thanks again Alexander for sending those seeds. But that's quite a fascinating one to me. Another one I'm enjoying growing this year is this one. It's the Frigatello. And the reason is, well, number one, it has very early peppers that you can see down there are ripe. But also look at the size of that flower. That is just massive. It's not your typical size flower for a chili pepper, but very beautiful plant. And again, we have weeds in my compost, which we need to get rid of. But uh, this plant's lovely. We've got some ripe peppers there. I might give that a try a little later, but a very fragrant plant as well. I can really smell it and uh, yeah, enjoy that, very nice. Another interesting one is my Naga Morik. This is a Capsicum Chenens, a super hot. We can see there that we have some ripe peppers coming through. Now it's quite small, Naga Morik should be a lot bigger than this, but this is one of the effects of having your plants in smaller pots for too long. Those peppers started when this plant was still in a one liter pot. Uh, once I potted it up, obviously they continued to ripen. The plant, you can see, is not very big. Nagamoric plants can get massive, but you can see that the canopy of this one over here is bigger. And that's because a lot of the energy is still going through to those peppers. So that's one of the reasons people will actually snip off the peppers or any flowers at the early stage because they think it's going to improve the growth. And that is the case if you have potted up too late. But if you're potting up correctly, then there's no need to actually do that. There's no need to top the plant or anything like that. You can see you will get a decent growth. But if, like me, you have gone and waited too long to pot up, then, yeah, it might be worthwhile to do that. But yeah, we can see this plant is starting to stretch out now. Lots of new flowers coming through. I'm just going to leave it go at the moment, just so I make sure I do have some nice super hots to enjoy a little bit later in the season. But uh, yeah, typically I would probably snip those off if I wanted to get some bigger growth. So you see these plants are looking lovely and healthy, deep green, uh, big leaves, and yeah, very happy with them. Everywhere I look, there's these remnants of ladybugs being born. So that's just the outer skin. There's nothing in there. This plant is a Naranga. It's a Capsicum Bactum. And... It's pretty cool little pods. I like the look of them. They look like little teardrops or Hershey's Kisses. But there's quite a few on here. This is still in its one liter pot. We can see down there. And uh, desperately wants to be in a bigger pot. I'm sure it'll grow 
far more healthily once it is. There's another one of our little friends, got so many of them. But this plant's looking interesting. I do like the, the look of these little peppers. Another thing that you can use to get rid of aphids is marigolds. So this is considered a companion plant. Aphids do not like the smell of them and will pretty much leave the area, go somewhere else. The other thing this is good for is as a sacrificial plant. So if you have slugs or snails in your garden, they love eating marigolds. So if you have these nearby, some tomato plants or other vegetables or chili peppers, then the slugs and snails will rather go and eat this before they'll go and eat any of your other vegetables. So do consider growing them. They look quite pretty as well. So really is a bit of a win-win situation. Here are my two bonchies. They are doing really well. This one back here, you can see it has a little bit of a nitrogen problem and I will deal with that. The problem is these are gonna be heavily root bound in here. I do have some bigger pots that I'll be transferring them to and I'll do a video on that to give you a proper update on these. But just a quick one here. We can see that this has some chilies coming through, which won't be long before they start ripening. So this is a super hot. I uh, can't remember offhand exactly what plant it is, but I'll put that up on the screen. We can see this one here as well is looking very healthy. What I love about this one is just the size of that stem. Look at it, it looks like a proper little tree coming through. Those roots are stunning, very thick down there. It's gonna look amazing. And I'm gonna keep that going for as long as I can, as well as this one. And we'll see what we do. We can see the, the roots down here are uh, still looking a little woody as well, but it's not as thick as the one on that plant over there. So look out for a future video where I will pot these both up and we'll take a look at what the roots look like because I'm sure these are gonna be so heavily root bound. This is the first of the two poblanos. This is the one that I'm growing indoors, of course. I potted this up at the same time that I planted out one in my raised beds and we'll go take a look at that straight after this. But if you have a look, this is looking healthy. It has had some new growth. I can see that coming through at the top here. Um, it's starting to branch out. You can see some new leaves down the bottom there. Very healthy and yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. Let's go and have a look at the one outdoors and do a bit of a comparison. Here is our poblano that we have planted outdoors and it's doing quite well. It's not as bushy as the one that's in the greenhouse, but I can see new growth coming through. We can see a few new leaves down there and a few coming through at the various nodes, but it's certainly not as healthy looking as the one that's in the greenhouse. Now, that's kind of what I expected with this experiment, but we'll keep track of this over time. We still have a few months before the season ends. We can see that we have some peppers coming through, so that's good to we'll be able to compare the size of the peppers, whether they're gonna be, you know, growing bigger out here than they will in the greenhouse. That'll be interesting. And maybe once the roots have properly established themselves, this might play catch up to the one that's in the greenhouse, but time will tell. I think we've got about three or four months of decent weather that we'll be able to monitor the progress. While we're out here, let's have a look at some of the other vegetables that are in the garden. These courgettes are doing really well. We can see we have quite a few that are growing. And uh, it's such a pretty plant as well. These flowers are just gorgeous, especially a little bit later in the season when this plant gets even bigger. We've got three plants here and the courgettes all seem to be a little different to each other. Uh, we can see, I think there's one growing over there. It's a bit longer and thinner than the ones over there that are pretty fat and stout. There's a really small thin one over there, but uh, yeah, lovely little plants. So I mentioned I planted my marigolds out here. There's a couple over there. These are my, well, the poblano, the chili plant, and then the rest of these are tomato plants. We can see I have marigolds in between all of them. Most of the tomatoes are doing quite well, except for that little plant there. That's not a very happy plant, even though it's got a few tomatoes on it. But uh, lots of flowers, and you can see there a few tomatoes coming through. Those are my artichokes and they are looking healthy. I will thin them out a little bit later in the season. I just want to see which ones are going to be the most healthy. Uh, I can already see that uh, these three over here are probably going to do the best and I'll probably keep that one over there. But we'll thin it out a bit later in the season. Over here we have a giant pumpkin which 
is starting to take off. It took a little while. It was quite slow growing, but uh, we already have some flowers starting to come through. And uh, we'll see how that progresses. So this has got almost this whole patch to itself. For now, I need to do a bit of weeding. Pak choy, those are coming through nicely. Can't wait for those to get nice and big because I love eating those with a bit of salt and pepper and some crushed up garlic, a bit of balsamic vinegar as well, and a little bit of olive oil. And you grill them on the barbecue. Awesome. Some more squashes over here. I think these are my gem squashes. And we can see they're growing quite well. Another marigold over there. And yeah, this is growing quite nicely. This is a gem squash, I believe. Yeah, definitely one of my gems. They need to hurry up because I want to eat some of those as well. Let me see. Uh, this is doing very well. What is this? This is another Atlantic giant. It just grows so big. Check out the size of that stem back there. And uh, over here we have some brassica. I still need to cover these over with some netting so that the butterflies don't just annihilate them. I have got some hoops that I'm going to be putting in place with the netting, but uh, it's just all a matter of time getting it done. Over here are some more squashes and pumpkins. This is a gem squash that is doing really well. And uh, I'm just trying to train it up. These archways will look lovely once that starts trailing up around there. So hopefully we can get that to happen. We've got another gem squash here, just uh, making itself uh, all twisted up around this frame that I've built. So we'll see how that goes as well. Probably need to tie that up a bit so we can get it to spread all around. Got some lettuces. I uh, harvested some of my lettuce yesterday, so we'll see if those come back. But we've got loads of others coming through and then some that I planted directly in the ground. So we're going to have loads of lettuce soon. And then, of course, my corn. Loads of corn. Uh, they're growing quite nicely. Again, needs a lot of sun. We have down here some peas that I've started and beans. So they'll be part of the Three Sisters method, which will help enrich the soil with all the nitrogen that they produce. And then, uh, excuse all the mess with the glass, but that's for the <laughs> large greenhouse. Still trying to get that finished. But... Uh, loads of growth coming through here uh, yeah pretty happy with how everything is growing and uh, we'll see how they progress through the season but so far so good still got to sort out these three beds that one over there is for my asparagus which are growing quite nicely inside the greenhouse and I'll put them out here probably in the next two weeks or so and uh, we'll see how we get on with the asparagus how are your chili chump seed kit plants doing? I've been keeping a close eye on mine, but of course I'm gonna be a little bit behind what you guys are probably at right now because I haven't been able to pot up and I've been a bit hectic with the move and trying to build greenhouses, etc. But uh, I have been keeping a close eye on one of my plants specifically, and that's the CGN19198. And that's because it is quite a fascinating plant. It, doesn't grow the same way as other chili plants. It is a bit of a rare one, which you kind of expect it to be a little different, but this one is just a bit strange. I'll show you mine in just a second. I did see some photos up on the Chili Chum Facebook group from you guys and what you're growing with the CGN19198, and it looks very similar to what I have, so <laughs> thankfully I haven't got a weed, because I thought it was a weed at first. So <laughs> let's have a look at it. It's this guy over here. Uh, it's kind of growing sideways, uh, yeah, it's just stretching out, long, long spindly branches, uh, beautiful little flowers, you can see uh, little purple flowers, look like tiny hats, <laughs> but very pretty plant, and I think I have a pepper starting over there, so it won't be long before we have some peppers, but yeah, I wonder how big it's going to get. How are yours doing? Let me know in the comments below, not just the CGN19198, but your other Chili Chump Seed Kit plants. I'm interested to hear about the progress of those. Obviously, I have quite a few others in here, and we'll get to those in a future video once we can actually sort through all these plants. But this one, I'm really fascinated with it and loving it so far. So we'll see how that goes through the season. 
Thank you so much for joining me in today's video. It really is a privilege to have you spend some time with me and I do appreciate it. I wanted to just mention, there's been a lot of comments asking for my hot sauce videos and get back to the cooking videos, etc. They are coming, I promise you, there are gonna be plenty of them. That's part of the reason we did this move, so we can expand what we're doing here. Uh, we can create more space to actually do some awesome videos for you guys. So please be a little patient. We've only been here the last three, four months. We've been doing so much work around the place, not just building the greenhouses, but inside the house, we haven't had a kitchen for the last three and a half months or so. That means my wife has been washing dishes inside our bathtub because there's nowhere else really to do it. I've been cooking outdoors every night. So it's a bit challenging to manage my time, but at the end of the day, this is all leading to more awesome content for you guys, which I'm sure you're going to love. So please just be a little patient and we'll get there. I wanted to also say I have a live stream coming. I have one at the beginning of every month, the first Sunday of every month. There's one coming soon, of course, which I will be doing a giveaway for the light that I mentioned in last week's video. So join just for that. Make sure you have entered that competition. But there will also be some announcements in that video that I'm sure you're going to want to hear uh, related a little bit to the content as well. So I hope you'll join me for that. It's good fun. I know it's July 4th, so a lot of my American friends, you'll be uh, celebrating your Independence Day, but maybe you can join me for a bit of an early beer or something. I know it's probably nine o'clock in the morning for a lot of you, but if you can join me, that'll be fantastic and I uh, look forward to seeing you there. Anyway, that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching and until the next one, stay safe and stay spicy.